Well, I'm Brian Jorgensen, one of the co-owners of JMT, with Jeff Sargent, a regional sales manager. Today we're in a customer shop, we're going to demonstrate a JMT servo press brake. It's an AD servo 30, 135, 10-foot, 150-ton machine. As domestic producers, we're faced with higher labor costs. So to stay competitive, an effective approach is to lower production costs. One way of doing that is in energy consumption. Our AD servo line of press brakes offer up to 66% reduction in energy use at an idle status and a 44% reduction of energy use in the pressing cycle. Standard configurations for the AD servo series, you have Y1, Y2 RAM positioning. Also with the AD servo, you have a standard XR back gauge. One other nice thing about the AD servo is it's a green machine. You've got less hydraulic coil in the oil reservoirs. The tanks are significantly smaller. Typical hydraulic systems, conventional, are somewhere in a 40 gallon range. These only run two 10 gallon tanks. One of the things that's often overlooked in the production environment is noise. The AD servo is on right now. Let me demonstrate just how quiet it is. Pretty quiet. Hey Jeff, it's okay if I point out some features of this machine. Um, we got LED lighting. In a dark shop, that's very handy. We it's actually uh, safety, and it also allows us to get more accurate parts to see them clearly. Um, this customer upgraded to get the welds and quick clamps. We do come standard with wedge clamps on our machine. I'd like to point out too is our daylight is not affected with our crowning. We got. Um, wave crowning in here. Um, a lot of manufacturers actually are putting on top of their machine. So you're actually losing daylight. We don't lose that with our style of crowning, which comes standard on this machine. We got um, nice support. Um, our mineral bearing system. It'll stay smooth for life. Actually, right here is a little brassing that pushes on here to lock it in place. It doesn't damage or mar anything. It keeps it smooth. Okay, this uh, an AD servo comes standard with an XR back gauge. This customer purchased a six axis back gauge. This has got Z1, Z2, X1, X2, R1, R2. That means you got all this kind of movement on our back gauge, any position. Um, one of the cool things about our back gauge, it's very heavy duty as you can see here. Oversized in my opinion, but we like that. We want our machine to last for years. Um, as you can see, all of our motors and delicate parts are covered by heavy gauge sheet metal to keep it safe from our parts in our, in our shop so it does not get damaged. Very smooth. It's a servo back gauge. Once again, very energy uh, efficient when you're using servo. Um, as you can see, we have a very clean, open area between frames. There's no interruption. Our guideways are mounted on the outside of our machine. A lot of manufacturers are on the inside. That limits what we can bend on our press brakes. Once again, our machine is unique. We could actually lay all the way up against the back of our piece, allowing us to do very big parts on this uh, press brake. Today I want to talk a little with you about the DA69T control offered on this machine. I'm going to give you a quick run through on how we draw a program in this control and just some of the features of it. Today, as I draw in a new program, I'm simply going to come over to our products key here. I'm going to go to new product. I'm going to give it a product ID. This helps us when we're searching for products later down the road. We have a very populated library. So today, let's call it test. I'm going to give it a product description. Then I need to assign it a material thickness. This would be the material thickness of whatever you're bending, whether it be 8th inch, 16 gauge, or whatnot. From there, I assign it a material type. And I also have the ability here to assign custom materials. I'm going to use mild steel for this instance. Next, it needs to know a bending length. This is the width of our part that will be in the machine. I'm going to use 24 inches for this example. Dimensions, 
our dimensions here are outer or inner. I'm going to select outer. And from this point, I can go right to the drawing page. So I hit accept. And this is where I can seriously draw in my part. It's such a cool feature. This can be any line segment on the profile of your part. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this line segment to be 5 inches long. It's great. I can grab my part. I can drag it. It uh, helps me to center it wherever. I'm going to touch simply where I want the bend to go. This interpolates where you touch, so it tries to anticipate what you're doing. Are you shooting for a side angle or are you actually going for a 90? It's, it's very intuitive. So I'm going to assign it a length here on this flange, one and a half inches. Check my angle. It's a 90 degree angle. This is what I want. I'm going to touch again on the other end and simply touch the side. Very easy. Again, I'm going to grab my part, go to the other side, start working from there. Here's my part. I can see this part in 3D too if I'd like. Really cool feature on the 69 control. From here, I need to assign the tools I'm going to use to bend this part. And this is where I can access my library. Here's my punch library. I'm going to select this punch. I can even uh, move my punches wherever at in the machine I'm going to be bending from. That's another cool feature. I'm going to assign it a bottom die. Let's say today we want to use a 0 0.470. From here I'm going to go to my bend sequence. We need to figure out the best possible way to bend this part. The nice thing about the DA69 is it will help us anticipate the best way to bend this part. However, I have manual control over the bend sequence. The first step is I need to completely unbend this part. Okay. And then from here, I need to bend, check, bend, check. And it's been my part. From there, I simply can go right into production. I can go to my auto page. It's gonna prompt me to check my tools and uh, positioning. And this is the point in the control where I would bend my part and check my real world bend conditions. If I needed a correction, this is where I can add that into the control at this time. I've also got the ability to see only a 3D view of the control of the part being bent so that I can be aware of how to position the part into the brake. If this is too complicated, I can get rid of all the framework off the machine and just go right to the tooling. How cool is that? This really helps your new operators. Um, they may not know how to put the part in the machine. This eliminates that. This is how you orient your part. This is how you're going to get the right bends. Another cool feature is when I am drawing or programming my parts in, I can actually do that in three-dimensional format, as you can see here. 